I like to do in a trot. Yeah, jokes. Yeah, like I can call her ugly. Just say sorry to her. I'm sorry you're ugly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is The Overthink Tank. I'm your host, Sridhi Pagga. And this is yet another episode of us overthinking your problems so you don't have to. Today, I have two special guests joining me. And, um, well, yeah, let's just, let's just meet them. You know what? Let's just meet them. Presenting Seema Golja. Hi, Seema. Hi, Sridhi. Seema. I have a feeling that you have another guest to introduce us to. I do. Uh huh. Do you want me to bring him out? Yeah. All right, Jack. It's time. Oh, come on, come on out. Ugh. Meet Jack Denials. Oh my God. That's me. Hi, Jack. Hi. Um. Right. I just want to make sure before I flirt with you. Are you eighteen and above? Oh, I'm eighty high. 85. Okay. That's perfect. That's kind of my type. Okay. <laughs> I will try to act normal. Guys, this is my first also. So I will try to act normal and not and look into Seema's eyes and not into Jack's eyes. That's so rude. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Jack. But Seema, this podcast is all about overthinking other people's problems. So we will have to give it our all. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. I did not doubt her. I'm ready to... Let's go for it. Shall we begin? Yeah. Yes. The question we're getting today is, Dear Overthink Tank, I'm a 23-year-old guy working remotely and I have noticed that I have this thing where I talk to myself a lot. Sometimes I catch myself reading work emails or messages out loud almost as if my coworker is in the room with me. I know everyone has an internal monologue but mine tends to go external quite a bit. Is this normal behavior? Well, Seema, do you talk to yourself? What is she doing right now? <laughs> well, this is what I do. I'm literally talking to myself. Okay, well, let's start with ventriloquism, right? I, I know that some people find dolls creepy. So tell me, were you, how did you get interested in ventriloquism? Were you always that kid who was like, oh, I want my dolls with me? Um, can I put him down first? Because he's going to be interrupting me. You think you're that good, right? I will miss you, Jack. I'll miss you too. I'm going to read back. Okay, yeah, you'll be back. You just sit here right now. Yeah, I'm literally sitting here. But uh, yeah, um, I had no idea that I would ever want to be a ventriloquist. I didn't even know what this term meant. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a cartoonist. So you were always into cartoons? Yes. And before I could do anything about it, I got married to a cartoon. I mean, <laughs> but um, then now I found that I have this split personality within myself. It's just last few years. And I'm loving the two sides of me. And that's how I'm able to portray that these are two completely different people and it's not all me. Yeah. So it's it works. So when did you know that you like talking to yourself? For the first time, I self-taught myself how to speak without moving my lips, how to have a different voice for this puppet, a different character, a different personality, a different accent. And from there... I mean, obviously, initially, I made a whole lot of mistakes. I mixed up voices. I spoke with, like, moving my lips. But then I actually attempted, I ordered Jack online and I did a first show in Toastmasters. And when I did that first show, I got a standing ovation. And that's, that, that's when I realized that um, I have found my calling and this is what I want to do. I didn't know how, but I knew that this is what I wanted to do. That's so fascinating. And... Uh I have a quick question. You ordered Jack online? Yeah. <laughs> I know, so rude, right? Shut up, Jack. Kind of, <laughs> kind of weird. <laughs> but you know what interests me about this question is that a lot of times I talk to myself out loud a lot, right? Sometimes I'm alone at home. Sometimes there are people around me, but I don't really care. It's almost like talking to yourself is looked 
down because it's like, are you okay? What is it? Especially if you're in public, you know, you can't be sitting in a bus and be like, you, you can't be talking to yourself. Nobody would want to sit next to you. So were you that kid in school at any point where were you, let me just, were you bullied in school? Because all everybody who's ever been into comedy, who channels it through something like this, has had a traumatic past. Let's talk about some trauma. No, there was none. The trauma happened, in fact, after I got married. Because I was a lot of fun when I was in school. I would bunk college. In fact, I was in the blacklist in my college back in Bombay. And from there, when I got married in a Marwadi joint family, where I had to wear a sari and cover my head, I became a completely different person. I didn't have a voice. I did not speak much. It was very different. It was very difficult. It was the whole, as it is being married is different. It's difficult. And then to be with so many people with like 15, 16 people in the house and to understand everyone's temperaments and all, then I realized it's better not to talk only. It's better just to be quiet. So from a person who would be full of life and bubbly and then suddenly I was like this docile housewife. And now what is happening is when I'm up on stage and I'm able to bring out both these personalities really well. So I'm still the goody to shoes, the, the, the bahu of the family. So yeah, all the fun and all the jokes, the rudeness, which is, I still have that in me. I wanted to say that to people all the time, like just get out. But now I, I can't do that, right? So it's coming out through Jackie. He tells anything to anyone. I think as a kid, I grew up really shy. And my outlet wasn't really talking to myself at that point. I hadn't discovered talking to myself. But my outlet was actually writing journal entries about people I hate. I, we, we all do that. <laughs> okay. I remember just like, you know, there would be this person who's like a surpi, who's the shy kid who doesn't talk back to you. But then there's this diary surpi who talks back and, you know, she she's not afraid of anything. So there's, that is also how I would like communicate uh, and sort of like give voice to my subconscious mind, yeah. which is so fascinating because I would do that as a kid and then it translated to me becoming a comedian and then overthinking on a podcast, just full of talking. Like there's no dearth of talking anymore. Do you find it fascinating too that how you as a child, if you're like, or in whatever, at whatever age, if you're told to like shut up, you will talk out, but in some different format. But I didn't know that it was all being built up yeah. over a period of years, yeah. so many years, that when I actually attempted ventriloquism for the first time, I could bring both these selves out up on stage. So all that was spented up over the years to be able to say what I wanted to, to people, I'm able to do that now through the puppet, which is like, oh my God, it, it's, it's, just, it's just so amazing. I, I can get used to this. <laughs> so finally, your internal monologue became external, right? It, yeah. Not through you directly, but through a dummy. You, I, I'm so sorry, but the technical word for the puppet is a dummy. I hate calling Jack a dummy. He's, he's more so than dummy. Yeah, I know she's really sweet. Jack, is Jack sleepy? Can we, can we bring out Jack? Yes, that's what I wanted. Okay. On popular demand, Jack, you're back. Oh my God, Jack. It's only been two minutes, but I missed you. I missed you too. You know, Jack, I have a question for you. Do you ever fall in love with uh, fellow dummies of other ventriloquists? Do you have a crush on someone? I mean, this, is, this podcast has great reach. So if you want to say hi to your crush. I, I don't. I don't want to say hi. What happened? You're suddenly camera shy. Yeah. But I'm in love with her right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, actually, I could say the same. Oh. What's, the, what's, the, what's the deal with the dummies falling in love? Is that, a, is that allowed in our culture? Let's get into the technicalities of this stuff, right? Ventriloquism. What does it mean exactly? I know, you're, I know you basically talk. And it seems like your puppet is talking or your or Jack is talking here. Right. But wait, how do you throw your voice? What was the first time, you know, you realized that, OK, wait, I could do this. Um, I just explored. I had no idea I had this inner voice. I didn't know I had um, 
different accent, different person inside of me. What kind of mistakes did you make the first time? Lots. Like, I would talk like this and I would be… I would be moving my lips and talking like this. That was weird. Yeah, that did sound weird when I mixed up voices and when uh, he would talk. His mouth wasn't… wouldn't move like this. So then Ian, oh no, I know because I can talk without knowing. Now let's… Now that you always have a hand up your dummy's ass. Is it weird? Yeah, you know, they always ask me, Hey, why are your eyes so big? If somebody did this to you, and you, your eyes would be like this. Okay. Yeah, the, the thing is, not all dummies, you put the hands from the back, from the ass. There are holes from the neck side or it just goes straight into the mouth. And then there are really high-tech puppets which have levers inside and with mouth movement. Of course, firstly, it's the art. Uh, can I put him down because he's kind of creeping me out? You know, I, I, I am you. Yeah, I know, but I can creep myself out sometimes. Okay, I'll go back. Goodbye, yeah. Jack. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so this a whole lot of things that go to, goes into this. Uh, what you have to realize is first, you have to find this other voice. Then you have to be able to speak with this other voice without moving your lips. Okay. Then uh, you have to give it a different accent so that you believe that this is a completely different personality. Uh, so this is a very basic puppet, what I'm doing right now. Uh, puppets can have a hand uh, rod also, hand movement. They have eyeball movements also. They can have eyebrows. Uh, these are these really high-tech pup, uh, dummies. But so much goes into it when you're up on stage. There's so much happening because you, know, you have to not just do the art, the act, but you have to memorize the jokes. You have to make it entertaining and funny and interesting. So when he's talking, I have to react differently. And I'm thinking what I'm going to speak next while I'm still talking for him. So this is just so much going on. It's not even funny. <laughs> I get that. So can you tell us, have you ever bombed? Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah. What I realized was for the longest time, initially when I would do my acts, I would not get reactions or laughters. I, I would see the audience smiling. But that's not what I want. Yeah, you want laughters. What I realized was that initially they're just trying to comprehend what is happening. Where is this voice coming from? Is it pre-recorded? Is, uh, was this like, this, is there somebody else talking from the back? How is this happening? Yeah. So it's, it's a kind of magic, and it honestly. Is. And then what I have also done is, in, as I'm learning, self-taught, I have tried two puppets, three voices, three accents at the same time. Okay. So there's a lot going on. Yeah. Do you ever confuse between like, yeah. oh, okay, this is my voice and that's my dummy's voice. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. And and to coordinate the left hand with what you are speaking, left is not the most active hand. So it's difficult to coordinate the sound with this hand. But I'm trying. I tried. I mean, I can <laughs> barely do anything with my right hand. So kudos to you for doing all of this. Another thing that I, I mean... I know that you travel, right? All comedians go on tours. Is it weird to like always have like a bunch of dolls in your bag? Does the airport security look at you weirdly? It's like, uh, lady, why are th what are these dolls doing in your bag? Yeah. Um, so I don't carry too many of them. Firstly, because they are really heavy and big and excess baggage is a thing. So there was this one time when um, so for the, with these human puppets, I make them do things, right? I was actually carrying handcuffs. With fur, those kinky types. Okay. And put my bag in the x-ray machine. And the cops, two, two cops came like, oh, you have something in this. And I had no clue because I thought these were like harmless toys, which were not really handcuffs. And, and they put it out like this. And he was holding up this pink furry handcuffs. And he's like, why do you need this in your hand? You cannot take this. I said, but this is a part of my act. I'm a comedian. I'm, I, have, I, have, I carry my own mics. I have my stand. No way I'm not going to. So my, I had to change my script then later because I couldn't carry. They, they took the handcuffs. They took it away? Yeah. Oh my God. I love, I love Jack and I love his offensive sense of humor. It's borderline offensive. But also I can't really blame Jack for it. I, I know you're the voice <laughs> behind it. You can practically give anything a voice. Actually, on the voice, she's the thought it. No. Yeah. 
You're right. Jack wins. Jack wins. <laughs> Jack is my favorite dummy. Wait, I also want to ask you, how many ventriloquists do we have in India at the moment? There are a few. I mean, it was a dying art, but now people are coming up. But uh, literally, I would say three, like a handful yeah. in the whole country. What's the sign of a good ventriloquist? Like, okay, I go to a show. How do I know if I had a, if this is a good ventriloquist? If you've enjoyed the overall act and if you've laughed, if you've been amazed or about that act, irrespective of whether that person's moved his lips or no, or if you just had a good laugh, I think it was, it, that person's a good ventriloquist then. So the thing with the adult brain and how it works is that it tries to ruin everything for myself. Like sometimes I would see a magic act and immediately my brain would be like, how did you do it? Is, are you hiding something up your sleeve? You're probably just, you know, this is probably CGI. We do this thing as adults where we go to a show, pay money for it, and then ruin it for ourselves yeah. by questioning it and being like, okay, no, this is probably not real. And does the same happen with ventriloquism, right? Like you go to a show, but then you sort of, try to figure out how she's doing it and you try to look at uh, the face a lot. Do people try to notice a, your face a lot and s check if your lips oh, are yes. moving? Lips oh, yes. Moving. That's why initially I don't get any reactions. Also, I would like to say something. What do you want to say? That, yeah, she always has something up her sleeves. Like right now. Okay. <laughs> You're never wrong, Jack. You're always right. I can, I'm a great husband material. <laughs> I think in my culture, it's okay to get married to dummies. So I will, I take you as my lawful husband. Anyway, eventually they'll all become dummies. That is true. Initially, I used to get really nervous because I didn't get, I wouldn't get reactions. But then I realized, okay, I need to give them some time to understand what is happening right now. You know, I went to the US in 19, 2019. Yeah, that's right. Um, and there in an audience of, 130 people in Gotham Comedy Club. I asked, has anybody watched ventriloquism live? Uh, raise your hands or give me a cheer. Not one person. I was shocked because when you see America's Got Talents, when you see all these Brit Britain's Got Talent, there have been ventriloquist winners. And here there are people who have not really watched it live. So I realized, oh, okay. Uh, this is something which even in... Like literally all over the world, people are not doing this somehow. Yeah. It doesn't it, like, do, do you question often, like, why is it that there's so few ventriloquists and even fewer of them are successful? I know about one of them, Jeff, Jeff Dunham. Uh, I've seen some of his acts and sure, his puppets are great. But also all of his jokes, most of his jokes are racist. Is there a play like... Uh, Basically, what I'm trying to ask is, do you have to do inappropriate jokes for ventriloquism to work? No. No? I, I like that. I like the inappropriate jokes. Yeah. Like, I can call her ugly. No. Jack. Whoa. Whoa. Can you not do that? Why? You, you just called her ugly. Why? Does she not know? Okay. Yeah, so that's why. Can you just say sorry to her? I'm sorry you're ugly. Wow. What the <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is how I tell him not to do things and he'll still do things. I get it. So you're saying inappropriateness is part of ventriloquism? Uh, of uh, joking. Yeah. Not the ventriloquism part. Because when I do shows for kids, I have to be super appropriate. Yeah. There's nothing I can say or say uh, or uh, do or even, you know, use the S word. Shit. Yeah, oh, that's what I meant. <laughs> You cannot use any of that, so... You cannot. Interesting. So, but do you feel like the laughs that you get are mostly uh, through the offensive jokes? No, I still wouldn't say that. You can do jokes without, being, uh, without offending people. I like to offend people. Because they can't even put me in jail. They'll have to touch you. Going back to the question we had, you know, it's, it talks about how sometimes your internal monologue will become, will slip into an external monologue. Why do people tend to do that? And uh, this guy who sent us this question doesn't think it's normal. 
What do you think? Do you think this is normal behavior? To an extent, yes. To an extent. To an extent, uh-huh. but not to this level, where uh, there's always conflict happening inside me. There's so much. There's always a positive and there's always a negative yeah. within myself. So there's always two sides of a story, which is good and bad in a way. Yeah. I can never take sides because a part of me wants to go here, but the other part of me wants to take this side. So got it. So you're always sort of looking for the the flip side of anything. Always. And that does help you sort of do you ever find yourself okay imagine you're not a ventriloquist okay or maybe you are you still one but you know you don't have your dummy with you do you ever self talk to like uh find a way to a problem or a solution to a problem yes and do you self talk in your dummy's voice yes <laughs> i can talk like this also it feels kind of naked yeah. what the hell <laughs> yeah <laughs> I feel like maybe this is the only right way to do it. If if this person is feeling that it's weird to like you know talk out loud, and I think the only right way to do is is to take your hand out, and then people will be much more likely to be friends with you and consider you normal. Um, no, I'm not so sure. Not Try so. it at, at your own risk. <laughs> But I I think I still think ventriloquism is so fascinating. Tell us a little more about. what is a character that you're working on okay so other than jack denials i have a granny she is this heavy old lady who's like again a meaner ruder version of jack uh, denials but a slower version because she's granny does she does she cough uh, no <laughs> she says fuck off Oh, but yeah, <laughs> she says fuck off. Yeah, I like a granny who's like straight. Yeah, and so she's one character who I'm building. There's another puppet who I just recently tried in one of my shows, solo shows, who is my doppelganger. Oh, so who looks like me? Okay, obviously an exaggerated, a cartoonized version of me, but it had big eyes, but similar hair and uh, like a black. Polo sh- t-shirt with denim and boots. It's like a mini you. So when I tried this act, I was wearing the exact same thing. And here, what I tried was the puppet was talking in a normal voice, and I was talking like this. So it was kind of funny, but I messed it up. Right now, I think you're doing all right. Yeah. So yeah. Got it. So, <laughs> so there's variations here on like on what you can do. I keep trying. Of course, there's a lot that you can do, uh, but these are just baby steps I'm taking. Before we close, I want to ask you, in short, how has ventriloquism helped you? Uh, firstly, I found my calling. It has made me realize what I am capable of. From no, absolutely having no idea what I could do in life. Yeah. so it helped me and find myself my inner self also i realized that very few people in the world are doing this so might as well work on this art form and the jokes and thirdly being a mo- mother a daughter in law you know where you have to be really fitting in all the time in your society in your you know family this is my way of venting out literally so that's a ventriloquism so it's helped me in i can't even ex- I, i can't even explain it to you how finally amazing. you have friends that you didn't have all your life oh my god for life okay. friends for life always i'm actually super keen on understanding how this works do you think i can put my hand up track only if you let me uh he can bite he can bite yeah can but yeah you must try okay i'll be yeah, careful Oh, this is what I dreamed of. Ha! Huh. All righty, Jack, you're with me now. Oh, this is oh 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 oh. What was that, Jack? Your mouth is open. Eh. <laughs> I'm you like. <laughs> just, just Jack get motion sick. During car rides, it's time to puke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all for today, guys. I have had so much fun with Jack Same and with here. you. And Sain here. He also had a great time. 
Oh yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, how about you talk? I'll just move it. Okay. Thank you so much. I had a wonderful time. I love you, Sudhi. I'm going back home with you. Ah, oh, I love that. What? Uh huh. Uh-huh. This is kind of creepy because I'm giving voice and it's not coordinating with my voice. I think I had so much fun. Thank you for being on the Overthink Tank. Thank you, Jack, for being on the Overthink Tank. This has been another episode. I will let Jack say goodbye to you one final time. Good. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Bye. See you, toodles. You are entering the overthink tank.